GNU Linux has experienced a lot of growth over the past few years. There are tons of videos of people trying out Linux for 30 days. Some of those people end up liking Linux and as a result start daily driving it. But despite all the backlash Microsoft has received in regards to Windows 11, Windows is still the dominant desktop operating system. So why isn't Linux more popular on the desktop? And I'm specifically talking about Linux as a desktop OS. I'm not talking about running Linux on a server or through WSL. There are a few reasons why Linux isn't mainstream, but in this video, we're going to be talking about hardware. Now, I'm not talking about a lack of hardware that supports Linux. In general, hardware support on Linux is very good, and in some ways it's even better than Windows and Mac OS. The problem is a lack of computers that come pre-installed with Linux. If you go into a shop like Costco, Curry's, or even a pawnbroker, with the exception of Macs and Chromebooks, every computer on display is going to be running Windows, whether it costs $200 or $2000. The same thing also goes for online marketplaces like Amazon. At least this is what it's like for the British market. But it's significant because if you're not good with computers, you're not going to know what to look out for. You're just going to go into the shop, talk to a sales clerk and say, these are my needs, what are my options? Now there are companies who sell Linux hardware like System76, Purism and Tuxedo computers, but unless you're already a Linux user, the chances are you've never heard of them. Another problem is these companies primarily focus on making high-end hardware rather than budget hardware, and I think there's a reason for that. A lot of people assume that Linux computers are cheaper than Windows computers because Windows costs money. This makes sense on the surface, but in practice it's not that simple. While it's true that Windows retails for around $100, OEMs like Dell, HP and Lenovo produce tons of computers in bulk as part of a big assembly line, so they most likely have a licensing agreement with Microsoft that gives them a massive discount. So each individual license might only be worth a few dollars, but for Microsoft those few dollars add up because of how many units these OEMs sell, hence why you can buy brand new Windows laptops for not much more than Windows itself, because for Microsoft that OEM discount is worth it. Back in the day, using an unactivated copy of Windows would severely hinder the user experience, but nowadays there's very little penalty to not activating, and many people do it. I also imagine these cheap Windows laptops aren't very profitable on their own. In fact, they might even be sold at a loss despite their poor specs. So they come pre-installed with bloatware like Microsoft 365 or not an antivirus to subsidize the cost. This not only makes these computers more profitable for the OEM and the retailer, it also makes the buyer think they got a good bargain, when in reality it's mostly just a marketing strategy for Norton and Microsoft. The irony is these cheap computers would probably run a lot better with Linux than with Windows, and the average Joe basically lives in a web browser anyway, so software compatibility wouldn't be a huge problem. But Mr GNU Lectures, these computers are rubbish. And you're right, the specs are not very good relative to the price when compared to what you can buy on the used market, and that could explain why companies like System76 and Purism focus on high-end hardware. If you're a large established brand, you can afford backlash because people are going to buy your hardware no matter what. But for a small company, building rapport with customers is paramount. Speaking of System76, some of their unique selling points include the fact that their computers use high-quality, locally sourced materials, are built in the United States instead of being outsourced to China, and of course System76 also developed their own Linux distribution. Those are all great and noble things, but it comes at a cost a lot of people either can't afford or aren't willing to pay. And if System76 stopped doing those things in an effort to cut costs down, it wouldn't look good for the company. Also, if you're looking for a high-end computer with the intention of running Linux, chances are you're the kind of person who would want to build their own PC. I used to build PCs for a living, and from my experience the cheaper computers had a smaller profit margin individually, but they were more profitable overall. In general, cheaper computers have smaller profit margins so a lot of people might buy pre-built just for the convenience. At this price range it might even be cheaper to buy a pre-built, whereas a high-end system has a much larger profit margin. So people will ask themselves, is it really worth spending an extra $200 to $300 just so someone can build the system for me? This could also explain why Linux laptops get a lot more coverage than Linux desktops, because it's not feasible for most people to build a laptop. Another problem with selling Linux computers, or providing Linux as an option, 
is what distro should be used. Should manufacturers make their own distro? Should they let the user choose from a number of popular ones? Or should they collectively agree to use the same one and then just preload their own software and drivers? Each solution has its pros and cons. Okay, well, that was a lot of information to swallow. Now let's address the elephant in the room. What about Chrome OS? Isn't Chrome OS based on Linux? Well, it's technically true, but in practice it doesn't mean anything because the user experience is radically different. Hence why Chrome OS and Linux are shown separately when it comes to statistics on desktop OS market share. But there's a reason why I'm mentioning Chromebooks. Let me ask you a question. Why have Chromebooks been so successful despite their limitations? I think the answer is marketing. Google isn't selling Linux, they're selling a solution. If performance doesn't matter and you just need a cheap laptop that can browse the web, Chromebooks, despite their sins, fill this void for many people. In a school environment, scalability, uniformity, integration, and the ecosystem are far more important than performance. A similar thing can also be said about the Steam Deck. Valve isn't selling Linux, they're selling a handheld gaming device because that's what people want. You could argue Linux is why the Steam Deck is as good as it is, and that is certainly true, especially given the work that's gone into Proton. But instead of obsessing over the operating system and Proton in its marketing, Valve just lets the Steam Deck speak for itself. Anyway, that's all for today's video, but before we go, I just want to thank all of you for 5,000 subscribers. I had no idea GNU Lectures would reach this milestone when I created this channel, but I'm glad you guys like the absolute rubbish I post here. I wanted to make a video sooner, but two weeks ago I was busy with training related to my trade, and last week I was abroad so I didn't have access to my computer. Until next time, cheerio.